Marvin Pierce, dog teacher. We're going to talk about collars, leashes, and fit. For me, if you're going to be consistent with a dog, as a lot of my videos, you'll hear this over and over and over. If you're going to be consistent with a dog and you're going to have, if you're going to be fair, I feel that we've got to be thinking of training like me right now. I'm talking, I'm going to talk about this collar I have in my hand. But I can guarantee you I'm 100% focused on my dog being hay. This dog also, he came here a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago. There's no way you would stand here with this dog with a leash hanging on your arm because he would be dragging you away. And now he's starting to learn a little bit of patience. And he has another dog, Axel, still wandering around in here with the handler. And also would love to go play with him and mouth on him, but he's not. He's been here, he's been hay. So <clears throat> these collars that we have, we're a dealer for them. We've, I've used these collars for, I don't even know how many years, but it's been 10, 15 years, whatever. Uh, I've been a dealer for them probably for 10 years. They're a pinch type collar. I feel they're similar to the prong collars. I use these versus prong collars just because they come on and off with a snap. You can pop them apart. You can take links out. You can put them back together. Then you have a smaller collar. With these collars, you never want them to be pulled together. If you pull together, then you just have a pulling device. You don't have a pinching device. So I always want a separation between the two links. So I pull and they're not together. My philosophy on this training collar is, I like, for me, when these puppies, dogs, they're barned, when they get in trouble by mom, they get bit on the neck, they get mouthed on, and mom will scruff them up a little bit, and I do that with this collar. So then, when mom's done with them, she releases the pressure and she'll lick on the dog, let them know life's okay, you're not gonna be in trouble again. Me, I just, when I bite on my dog with a collar, get them to quit, as soon as they do, I tell them, good boy, good girl. And then they start wanting to hear that, that they're good. I've never seen a dog yet that doesn't want to be told they're being good and be petted on. So if I can get those two things with them, I can get these, what is this pup, eight, nine months old? How old is he, do you know, Dari? How old is this pup? Uh, maybe eight months old. And he got here and he was just ornery. I mean, he was just ornery. He just couldn't do nothing right. He only got in trouble. He came here with another dog they had named Lola, who we had a video on somewhere, a short video. Lola got doing so good, she went home early, which me, I was tickled to death to see her go home. Hopefully they continue with her. But this dog couldn't be still when he got here. And for me, you can't make a dog, or I, my philosophy is you should not make a dog be still. You should teach a dog how to be still. These dogs are not born to be bad. We either teach them to be bad or we just let them be bad and don't correct them. If you're fair with them and you just teach them to act like this, they'll start acting like this. But now, Oso got here, I don't think he's got to play with a lot of other dogs. The virus thing's really messed up dogs being dogs. Or, uh, and I don't know how much is messed up dogs being dogs or how much people use it for an excuse for their dogs being bad. You know, sometimes people are just like, well, I don't know what happened. I know what happened. They didn't get trained. So I'm going to let you put up th this dog. Okay. And I'm going to work with this dog for a minute. So go to Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher YouTube. Check out our videos. Uh, follow us. I mean, like I said earlier, pick out a dog you like and just keep following. Good boy, Axel.